Hello there, it's Tim again, Golf 5 Tango Mike, and today we're going to look at how you can install an antenna at home when you don't think you've got the space for it. So especially living in the UK of course, we've got the problem of uh, living, a lot of us anyway, in fairly small gardens. And when you want to operate HF, that can be a problem. So I live in a garden, as I mentioned many times before, which is about 29 feet wide, which is about 9 metres or so. And uh, fitting in a HF antenna in a space like that can be a bit of a challenge. But if you think creatively and uh, consider the options you have ahead of you, then even getting an antenna that you think won't fit in that sort of space uh, is possible. And in fact, you know, if you think about it, 29 feet is barely a half wave on 20 metres. But of course, uh, if you want to operate on 40 metres or below, then you need to think creatively. And uh, I'm going to show you an example of what I'm doing right now with an N-fed half wave to enable me to use 40 metres quite easily in a space, as I say, that is barely wide enough for a 20 metre antenna. OK then, so uh, this is a sort of uh, roughly to scale diagram of the uh, installation. So what we've got here is, uh, first of all, if you look at the bottom here, uh, we have 29 feet of horizontal space. That's all we have from basically one pole, which is against the fence, to the far pole, which is also against the fence. So you're thinking, well, how can we get 66 feet or roughly 66 feet of wire, which will get us 40 meters on, as a center, as a sort of a half wavelength? How do we get that in a 29 foot space? Um, well, let's have a look. So, first of all, what I've done, I put two 19 foot fiberglass poles to act as supports. So we've got 19, this is the bottom, this is the ground, so 19 feet goes up to here. On the far side, the same. On the N-fed half wave, I have the 49 to 1 feet point around 5 feet off the ground here. So I run 14 feet of wire up to near the top of the 19 foot pole. It then goes up, as you can see, to the top of the support pole, which is 31 feet high. So that's 19, so it's 14 feet of wire here, plus 20 feet of wire, gives us 34 feet. I then run the wire back down to the other 19 foot high support pole. Now that gives me 17 feet because there's a shed down here somewhere, which means that the support pole is actually slightly closer to the far end than it is the feed end. That means that this length of wire is slightly less than this length of wire by about three feet. So we've got 14 feet, 20 feet, 17 feet, and that then goes down vertically to a height of around seven feet off the ground. So that final run is about 12 feet. So overall, we've got 14, 20, 17, and 12 feet. That gives us around 63 feet of wire. Now you're thinking that's still short of a half wave on 40. Two things to that. First of all, you've got to take into account the velocity factor of the wire. And secondly, when you uh, shape an antenna in this sort of way, uh, either house shaped, as I'll call this, or maybe as a half square where it'll go up, across and down, you tend to find the more bends you have in a wire like that, the, uh, the shorter it needs to be to reach that same sort of electrical length. So in other words, what I found with this is that this is probably about a couple of feet shorter than it would have been had it been a straight long wire for 66 uh, for, for the 40 meter band. So it would have been 66 feet then. And because it's shaped like this, it's okay to be about 63 foot long. So there you are. That's how I've shaped the antenna into my small garden. Okay, the other, key, the other key things to bear in mind here, and I'll use maybe a different color. We've got, uh, we've got a black pen here. Bear with me a second while I grab a black pen. Here you go. Oops. <laughs> so, um, you'll notice, hope you can see, that the angle, or the angles, between each bend are not less than 90 degrees. So, for example, in this first bend here, going up from the feed point, and then going up towards the turn from the top of the 19 foot support pole up to the center pole, that angle is uh, far greater than 90 degrees. Similar here on the other 
bend going back down towards the other support pole. These two, as I mentioned in the previous video, are both the combined angle is slightly greater than 90 degrees. The combined angle here between the two wires at the sort of apex point of the inverted V, or this part of the inverted V. And how do we know this? Well, again, the uh, difference in height between the apex and the support bit here for, in both situations, okay, is 12 feet. And because this run here is 16 feet of horizontal space, that means it's going to be greater than 45 degrees. And because this one is 13 feet, again, more than 12 feet in terms of the height difference, that's going to be greater than 45 degrees. So the combined angle is roughly around 100 degrees. So therefore, all the bends are going to be greater than 90 degrees. And the reason why that's important is because it means that your antenna, uh, the signal of your antenna is less likely to be cancelled out. It also means that uh, your antenna will perform much as it should do in terms of the length it is proposed to be. In other words, this antenna's performance is very much like it should be as a sort of uh, inverted V with effectively two droopy ends. But of course, instead of being fed in the centre, it's fed here towards the bottom as it's an end-fed half wave. Okay. So here we are. Uh, this is the feed point about five feet up. There is the 49 to 1. And here's the wire making its way up the initial pole. There's the top of that pole where the wire had come up from and it goes across to the here we are as my finger is about to show you it goes across to the apex about 31 feet up 10 meters and back down to the other supporting pole on the far side of the feed point which is again 19 feet up about oh, six meters and then that as i'll show you in a second as i walk towards it uh, that uh, wire then comes down to around two and a half meters above the ground around seven feet out of harm's way, just about. And uh, that's basically how I've squeezed in that end-fed half wave for 40 metres, which gives the other bands as well. Well, I hope that was useful. Now, as you've just seen, I mounted that antenna around five feet above the ground, which is just under two metres. Of course, with end-fed half waves, they can be mounted just above ground level. Um, so you do have an option. So if I needed 66 feet in that situation, I could have just brought the feed point down lower. Uh, but as it was, it seemed to, to work pretty well. Uh, I actually pruned that antenna on the basis of the 40 meter monoband end-fed half wave that I have. Um, so actually, to be honest with you, it's it's absolutely fine both with those dimensions for the monobander as well as for the 49 to 1 multiband option, which means I've still got a very good match on the harmonic bands of 20, 15 and 10 as well as for 40 meters. Now other antennas to look at soon for small spaces will be verticals, so we're going to look at those and also how to get 80 meters in the garden of this size. Um, I've done it before, but I've got another way of perhaps looking at it as well. So we'll have a look at that in a, in a future video oh, too. So there you go. I hope that's of use to you anyway, especially if you're new to HF and maybe you've just got your license and you want to put that the first HF antenna in the garden. Don't just take the horizontal space. Look at what you can do about bending wires and things. And as long as those bends are greater than 90 degrees, you're not really going to affect the performance of the antenna too much. And you'll get a, uh, an antenna in your garden that's actually going to get you a band or two lower than you think you might do. Anyway, thanks for watching, take care, and don't forget to click subscribe and share and that bell button, and I'll wish you 7-3, and to wish you good luck with your antenna installation too. Bye-bye.